So five or six years ago, you're, you start looking into these claims about origin of life research and these prebiotic simulation experiments. And as an organic chemist, an organic synthesis specialist, you say hey, the chemistry doesn't do what these guys are claiming it would have done on the early earth. And, and so you began to critique this and you made some, uh, you had some lectures online, and then some people started to push back. And one of the guys that pushed back apparently was uh, someone who has a handle online as Professor Dave, his name is actually Dave Farina. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about him? Because the, I know that the new series that you're coming out with is responding in part to him, and I'm wondering if, what is Dave Farina's background in this debate? So Dave Farina is, he calls himself a science communicator. So he makes videos, a lot of scientific videos that explain things to the masses. And I've always said good things about the fact that he's making scientific videos for the masses and explaining to, to school kids the, the different scientific topics. I never watched any of his videos uh, uh, up until recently. I never watched any. I didn't even know who he was. But he came. So you, so you didn't you didn't start this argument. Apparently, he he attacked some of your lectures. Is that how it got started? Right. Well, actually, it was because of you again, Steve. Oh my uh, goodness! You you invited me to uh, a Discovery Institute talk in Dallas a few years ago, and I gave a talk that I guess really teed him off. And okay. so he made a forty-five minute video based on my thirty-minute video. Uh, saying many things that were just categorically wrong scientifically. And I, without any ad hominem attack, I just spoke about, I made a 13 part series, actually it's, it's 14 parts, one, one of the parts is A and B, but say a 13 part series where I went through a basic teaching on the chemistry that's needed for origin of life. And that's been up for, for uh, two years now. And based on Something that- Something we highly recommend, by the way, it's excellent. Yeah. Right. So if you want to learn about the chemistry that's needed for origin of life, you can you can learn it there. And then uh, uh, based on that series, he came out with a two part series critiquing my my 14 part or 13 or 14 part <laughs> okay. series where he came with a lot of ad hominem attacks. But I'm not going after him anymore uh, at, at, at all with ad hominem attacks. I'm just critiquing his science. But amazingly, Dave Farina got every slide wrong in his first now, now, presentation. Is, is, is he an origin of life expert himself? What are, what are his qualifications to be weighing in on this discussion in this in this issue? He has as much qualifications as we have pieces made for building cells. Zero. He has no qualifications for this. What he's very good at is speaking extremely authoritatively, and in, in, uh, in many cases that 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 that's an advantage. But let so, me so he doesn't have a, a, a PhD in a relevant field, chemistry or biochemistry or anything like that? Or? No, 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 no. Okay. He does. So he's a... Um, he's a musician, like, um, actually. He's a musician. But, but he's a science... Is he a science Commun teacher? Is he, he calls he himself a, a, a science communicator. Okay, now, I see. Now, now I'm, but, I'm not critiquing any of his other videos. All I yeah. know is that the man doesn't know any chemistry because he succeeded in getting every slide wrong the science on every slide in his first series, in his first lecture, was wrong. His, his ses, second one, where he had a two-part series, he succeeded again in getting the science wrong on every one of his slides. Now, think about this, Steve. How hard it is to get every problem wrong on an exam. Uh, and he's trying to get it right. But let me, let me say up front that I have to thank God for David Farina. If it had not been for him, I would have just continued doing my own thing. But because he came out with this, I had to come with this 13, 14 part series describing everything so that the general public can understand the problems. Well, that's, that leads to my next question, because at some, if, if he's not a qualified expert, uh, and that would be fairly obvious maybe to people watching these videos, why did you feel the need to respond to him? Aren't you punching a little bit below your weight class as one of the leading organic chemists in the world? Right, so, so at, at the time I had a YouTube channel with about 10,000 subscribers. He had a YouTube channel with nearly a million subscribers. Since, so, so uh, uh, 
I thought, wow, this has to be responded to. He has a million people that subscribe to his channel. Now, since then, mine has gone up to, to, <laughs> to I don't know, just something around 40,000. His has gone up to over, for, gone up over 2 million. So his is more than doubled. Mine has about quadrupled. So, <laughs> but, but our, but it's going to take our, a while our, for our, you to catch up with them. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> very different. So, so only, only because he's speaking to so many people, I thought it was worthwhile. And, so, uh, so, and so you felt a kind yeah. of scientific responsibility to combat a disinformation campaign that he was single handedly waging against you and others who are critical of these experiments. Is that 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 is correct. Now, I will say on his second series, he brought in three so-called experts in the area of origin of life. Each one of them was a synthetic chemist, two synthetic organic chemists, one synthetic inorganic chemist. And he had them talk about their own work. Two of them came on and he, he spoke to them in a conversational format and they described the work. One of them had made a video for him on some previous topic. He had inserted it as if that expert were responding to my video, which he was not. And I know that because he's a friend of mine and I talked to him and all of this is going to be exposed. I don't think he was he was very honest in the way he made the presentations. But in any case, bringing on the experts was good because now in a social medium, a social media forum, I could then contest with them and show how their own data. Uh, so you don't data. have to punch below your weight class anymore. Right. You can take take on experts, and which has been your concern from the beginning, as from I understand the beginning. it, is right. that the experts who present their prebiotic simulation experiments to the public through the media are are grossly overstating the significance of what they've achieved in the laboratory. Is that correct? That is correct, and and. Uh, so Dave Farina has all has contested that it's the press that ramps this up, not the origin of life researchers themselves. So this was perfect. I could go after the very articles. I'm not in this new series that's coming out that, that uh, is, is already launched and, and, and uh, several of them are already out now. In this new series, uh, there's... I'm, I'm looking at the exact papers that Dave Farina put up there and the exact experts, what they put up there and critiquing their own work, doing the job that the reviewers of those papers should have should, done, should have done, as should have done. Right. And, and just exposing from their own work, how their own work screams out. This is not how life could have formed. It couldn't have happened this way. The, because the, the, chem the chemistry doesn't move in the direction that they uh, say it does without extensive interventions and assist from intelligent human chemists. Is that and, is the essence of the problem? Uh, that's one of the, the one, one of, of the, the problems, yeah. one of the problems, yeah. because because it, it's even with all their human interaction, they don't get what they say that they've gotten. They, they, they never get homochiral material. In most cases, they get vast mixtures that they themselves are unable to use. Yet they suggest that if this were on an early earth, early earth could take it and take it on from there. You can't use it from there because what happens in chemistry, if the compound that you want is heavily contaminated with a lot of compounds that you don't want, even lightly contaminated at times, you can't use it because it gums up the works. It interferes. It's interfering chemistry. And so chemists go through great lengths to purify it. But in these cases, their mixtures are so bad that they don't even go to the great lengths to purify it. They just see it, they notice it with, with very so they, they, high, notice, they notice a compound that they want is in this vast mixture of other things that have been produced by their simulation experiment. And they say, since it's there, I'm just gonna go buy that off the shelf and start over in the next step as if you could get from the, the uh, conglomeration of all those different uh, compounds to the purified starting point that they need without some intervention of an intelligence. That's absolutely right. They're buying it and the compounds that they buy have been isolated from already living biological sources or oh. sources that have been made using biologically relevant chemistry, meaning that you, you, have, you have enzymes that have been made biologically and you're using that. So it's a, it's a total cheat. 
You go along well, it, and it's a total yeah, I want to stop press right there. That's really significant because the whole idea of prebiotic simulation experiments uh, is that they are simulating how you get from non-living chemicals to living chemicals. But if in order to do that, you have to take a compound derived from a living cell and use that to simulate how you get to a living cell, that's a profound cheat because the whole idea is you're trying to, you need to show how you get from simple non-living molecules and, and, and chemicals to uh, uh, chemicals that are relevant first to life and then finally to a living organism. But if you get, if you're pulling stuff out of a living organism, um, you're, you're defeating the whole purpose of the, the experiment itself. That's right. It's a cheat at every step. They cheat yeah. at every step. It's, yeah. it's chemically cheating at every step. It's scientifically cheating at every step. In no other field of chemistry could you get away with this. And yet, Because, because after step, all, what they're trying to simulate is how undirected chemical processes could produce life. But if to produce even the uh, substrates of life, the, 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 the compounds out of which life, uh, the different classes of molecules out of which life is formed, they have to themselves intervene repeatedly and intelligently, then they're not simulating an undirected process. They're arguably simulating the need for a directed process. And you might call that intelligent design. Yeah, but, but even with all their, their intelligent design, what I'm saying is they, they don't get they it. They still so don't get there. They, they still, they don't, get still there. don't get it. And yeah, so the yeah. next step, they have to buy some more of the next okay. thing. And the yeah. next step they have to, because in every step that they do, they don't get what they want. And this is what I'm exposing on the series. Watch this thing and just watch the, the, well, the, 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 the things that they put forth as if it's intelligently, it, it, as if it's done without, any, any, yeah. Uh, yeah, without yeah. any direction. And then even with all their direction, they can't use what they get. Chemistry is really tough. And then they make these crazy wild claims that I'm calling them out on. You know, you, you had a predecessor in this role in Origin of Life Research. Uh, he died a few years ago. His name was Robert Shapiro, and he was also an organic chemist. He wrote a book, A Skeptic's Guide to the Origin of Life, back in the 80s, but continued to publish papers in Origin of Life Research right up to the time of his death. I attended a conference with him in 2010, I think, and people in the field uh, respected him, but they didn't like him because <laughs> he was constantly exposing the kind, the same kind of things that you're exposing. And they used to call him Dr. No. But his point was the chemistry doesn't do what you claim it must do to, to spontaneously or, or in an undirected fashion form these essential uh, building blocks of life or the essential uh, categories of, of, of molecules. So, um, you're in good company. He's just passed on. So Shapiro okay. would, I think, approve of what you're now doing. All right. 